Hey guys, it's your favorite reliability test guy here with another fun-filled, action-packed video on reliability tests and validation topics. Today's video is on MIL standard A10H method 514.8, section 3, conducting and documenting vibration tests. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to pick up a copy of my book, Mastering Vibration and Shock Testing. If you want to learn more about vibration and shock testing, fixture design, product development, and setting up and conducting vibration tests. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the video. In this video, we will cover an introduction to vibration testing, key information required, pre-test planning and preparation, documenting during the test, post-test documentation and reporting, and a review and best practices. So let's go ahead and get started. Vibration testing is a critical part of evaluating the durability and performance of materials and systems under dynamic conditions. Whether it's for military hardware, aerospace components, or consumer electronics, vibration testing helps ensure reliability in environments subjected to mechanical shocks, seismic events, and vibration stress. Today we will walk through a comprehensive process per Section 3 of vibration testing as outlined in MIL Standard A10H Method 514.8. This video will provide an overview of Section 3, which will cover everything from pre-test planning to post-test documentation, and how these processes are crucial in obtaining reliable and accurate test results. Before we begin the test, it's important to understand what information is required to plan and execute vibration tests properly. Here's a breakdown of the essential details needed. General information from Part 1, paragraphs 5.7 and 5.9. Test schedule, duration of exposure, and the test equipment limitations. And control and response transducer specifications. First, you'll need a comprehensive test schedule that includes the duration of exposure and the specific test conditions. This will help you ensure that the vibration test replicates real-world conditions and that the equipment is operated within its specified limits. You will also need to consider and define test shutdown procedures and test interruption recovery procedures, along with test completion criteria and allowable adjustments. Document the test shutdown procedures in case of equipment failure or unforeseen issues. If the test needs to be interrupted, make sure there are recovery plans in place to continue without compromising test integrity. Additionally, clearly define your test completion criteria, along with any allowable adjustments to your test or fixture. Next, we need to define the vibration test to meet the requirements of the equipment or conditions it will be exposed to. Here's what you need to consider when looking at each procedure. Procedures 1 and 4 cover test fixture requirements, modal surveys, vibration exciter control, test tolerances, temperature conditioning, and axes of exposure. Procedure 2 covers loose cargo vibration orientation, test time per orientation fixture, and requirements. And Procedure 3 covers large assembly transport vehicle settings and suspension configuration. For Procedures 1 and 4, the test fixtures need to be thoroughly examined for modal surveys. You'll also need to specify the vibration exciter control strategy, whether it's force limit, waveform control, or multipoint response. Tailor test parameters for specific requirements including temperature, humidity, and combined environments. Tailoring also involves adjusting the test parameters to accommodate specific facility limitations and the anticipated environment of use. For example, incorporating temperature and humidity into the testing ensures that your system can withstand environmental changes. Once the test begins, you need to ensure that you're documenting the data meticulously, especially in regards to how the test is performing and how your system is behaving under the vibration test. Document vibration exciter control strategy, whether it be single point response, multi point response, or force limits, and record test specific data and adjustments. Throughout the test, document the vibration exciter control strategy used, such as whether you are using single point or multi point response. Also, keep track of any changes made to the test item or fixture during the test, as these adjustments may impact the results. Record data such as test stoppages equipment failures, or any unexpected results. Be sure to note any test interruptions, 
failures, or other issues that arise during testing. These insights can provide information on the robustness of the test item and the test setup itself. Once the test set is completed, it is essential to have a detailed post-test report. This is essential for interpreting the test results. Here's what should be documented. Summary of test events, interruptions, failures, and functional verification data, vibration measurement data, along with modal analysis data and test results interpretation. Start by summarizing all test events, including any interruptions and failures. This helps identify potential issues and better understand the results. You'll also need to include functional verification data, modal analysis, and vibration measurement data to complete the report. Documentation of any test requirement variation and record combined environmental parameters such as temperature and humidity. Make sure to document any variations from the original test plan, including unexpected results or deviations in the testing conditions. Additionally, document any combined environmental parameters such as temperature and humidity as they can influence the outcome of tests. To ensure the success of your vibration tests and to ensure reliable test results, following best practices is key. Ensure test equipment meets force acceleration and velocity specifications. Regularly update test plans based on facility limitations and LCEP requirements. Always ensure your test equipment is capable of meeting the required force, acceleration, and velocity specifications. If any changes or variations are required, be sure to document them thoroughly. Review results for inconsistencies and repeat tests if necessary. Share findings with stakeholders and apply lessons learned to future tests. After the test, review all the results for inconsistencies or unexpected findings. If necessary, repeat certain tests to validate results. Finally, share your findings with stakeholders and apply any lessons learned to future tests and projects. Vibration testing is essential to ensuring that the products can withstand real-world conditions. By thoroughly documenting all pre-tests, during tests, and post-test information, you help ensure that test results are valid, repeatable, and actionable. Following the guidelines of MIL Standard 18H Method 514.8 ensures that equipment you're testing is prepared for dynamic loads it will face in its service life. Remember to tailor your test to your specific requirements and document everything meticulously. And that's it folks! I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching!